Last week, Thinkorswim rolled out five more updates that you might want to know. The very first of those is a new tool for our charts called the Chart Navigator. Now we can add that tool to any chart that we want by either coming up here to the chart settings, the little gear icon up here in the upper right hand corner, and then within this little pop-up menu, just coming over here to the Time Axis tab, and then just selecting Chart Navigator down here in the lower right hand corner and hitting OK. Now the other option is by simply coming up here to the Style button, again up here in the upper right hand corner, and then within that little drop down menu, just coming down here below and check marking Show Chart Navigator. So now you can see as soon as I check mark that, looking down below here at the very bottom of my chart, it shows me which portion of the chart that I'm currently zoomed in on. And then if I wanted to drag it back in time, I could simply click on that and drag it left or drag it right. And then just like always, if I were to come up here to the chart itself and just double click, I'm now fully zoomed out. I'm looking at the full yearly view in this case. But if I wanted to zoom in on, let's say, June to August, we can now see this is the portion of the chart, but we can still see the full chart in the background. And then simply drag it where I want to go if I needed to. Now, the next addition is completely different. It actually has to do with how your accounts are organized up here in the upper left hand corner. So for those of you with multiple accounts, when you come up here to the upper left and select this little account tab, this is where you can see a list of all of your accounts that you can switch to. Or we could always come down below and select all accounts if we wanted to see all of our accounts at once. But for some of you out there, you might not want to see all of the accounts in this list because maybe some of them are just retirement accounts that you never really trade and don't really want to see on here. Or you might just want to change the order of these accounts because maybe you like to have your IRA at the very top, your individual account down below, however you like it organized, you now have the ability to edit that. And to do that, we could either go over here to setup in the upper right hand corner and then select application settings, or more likely if you're actually over here on that accounts tab, all we have to do is come down below and click this little gear icon. Now, as soon as we do that, all it did was open up those account settings. So right down here, we can see our current list of accounts and I'm going to hide these account numbers, but right here you can see the first one on the list is the IRA and then I've got the individual account. But let's say I wanted to edit that slightly. I wanted to put the individual account on the top. So what I could do is come over here and select custom. And then all I'm going to do is go ahead and click on the individual account and then select move up. So now if I were to come down below and hit apply settings, all that's changed is if we go back up to the account tab up here, the individual account is first, the IRA is second. Now, if I wanted to get rid of the IRA completely, I'll just go ahead and click on that gear again. And then down here below, I'm going to go ahead and uncheck the IRA, just saying I do not want to see it. So now after I do that and I hit apply down here, if we go back up to the account tab at the very top, You'll only see the individual account listed out down here, but it'll also tell you how many hidden accounts you have. But that'll be update two. Now, the third update is for those of you who might want to adjust your tax lot ID method when you're closing a position. So for example, let's say you bought 200 shares in two different lots. So you bought 100 shares at $100 a share and you bought another 100 at $150 a share. And now it's the end of the year and you actually wanted to sell about half that position but you want to specify which shares you wanted to sell. Did you want to sell the shares you bought for 100 or the shares that you bought for 150? Because remember, for tax purposes, that's going to matter. That could influence if you're going to have a nice tax bill at the end of the month or if you're going to be offsetting your taxes with some losses. So let's just say you wanted to do that. And for this example, let's say I've got 200 shares of Apple in this account right now and I wanted to sell half of it. So the first thing I need to do is just build out a normal order ticket. So I'm going to come up here to the top, Apple's current price, simply click on that number, and then down below in the list, we're going to select sell. Down below, we can then see our order ticket. And remember, we would just fill this out exactly like normal. So in this case, I'm selling 100 shares of Apple. Let's say I'm happy with that current price, 244.40. But remember, what I want to do is change the tax lot ID method. I want to specify which shares I wanted to sell. So if we come over here to the gear icon, way over here on the right, go ahead and click on that. Some of you might know this little menu here as the conditional order tool, 
which is where you can come to actually put conditions on your orders to say, hey, I only want to submit this order when the stock crosses the 50-day moving average, or I only want to buy it when there's a bullish MACD crossover. But what it can also do now is right here in the middle where it says tax lot method, right here in the menu, you can specify if you wanted to do first in, first out, last in, first out, highest cost, lowest cost. This is where you can specify which shares you wanted to sell. So for example, if we wanted to sell the shares that we had at the highest cost, in this case, the shares that we bought for 150 in my example, I would just select highest cost here. If I were to leave it as default, my default currently is FIFO, so it's always going to sell the shares that I bought first. But this is where you can now change it. Before, if you wanted to do this, you could only do it on the Schwab website, but now it's in Thinkorswim. Next up, update number four. This is going to be a new addition for you short sellers out there. So if we come over here to our watch list over here on the side panel, they've recently added a new column called approximate borrow size. So this is going to tell you how many shares are currently available to short for the stock that you're looking at. So if we wanted to add the column to this my watch list section right here, we'll go ahead and click on the little gear icon and then select customize. In the little menu here, we can now see all the columns I'm currently using and then all the columns I could add and the brand new one is called approximate borrow size. So if we go ahead and click on that and add it, what you're going to see here, if I go ahead and expand it a little bit, is the amount of shares available to short for this particular stock. Now they really need to format this to make it much more legible, but it looks like there's about, uh, what is it? 7.8 million shares on American Airlines, 31 million shares on Apple, 25 million shares on AMD and so on. This is where we can now see how many short shares are available or how many shares there are available to short, I should say. Now, I believe they also added the borrow rate, but that might have been on a past update. But if we go ahead and look that up for just a second, right here in the list, you can see the short sale borrowing rate. And this is how much you're going to owe basically on how much you borrow. So what interest rate are you paying on that short position? So if we were to add that one as well, let me see if that shows us anything. Okay, all of the stocks in this list have a 0% borrow rate, but that might be another nice addition for you short sellers out there. Now, the fifth update, not a really big one, but if you look up here in the upper left-hand corner where I currently have this news gadget, what they did is add the ability to filter the news right here. So if we come up here to the top where it currently says all 10 channels, these are the news sources that you currently have access to. So if we didn't want to see CNBC articles for some reason, or maybe we didn't want any news from MarketWire, you could always unselect those and basically just filter by the news type. If we wanted to see everything from everywhere, we'll go ahead and select all channels again. And even though this isn't a new addition, you could also filter by other things as well. So right here, this little shopping tag icon, if you go ahead and click on this, right here you can filter by specific keywords. Now, these are just top news keywords. You don't have to use these. These are just example ones. We could always type in anything we wanted right here. And then all it's going to do is filter by that keyword. So in this case, if we wanted to filter all these articles by articles that mention the CEO in them, we'll go ahead and filter by CEO. Doesn't look like there's anything. Oh, there we go. Now we've got three to look at. Then if we wanted to clear that, we'll just go back up to the upper right, go ahead and exit out. And now we've got all the news again. Now, those are the five updates that I wanted to mention right off the bat, but I got one extra additional update, one special update, I suppose, for those of you who use ThinkScript. So currently, if you were to look at my chart right now, you can see this nice label up here in the upper left-hand corner, and this goes for any labels. This one just happens to show the current IV, the current IV rank, and the current IV percentile up here. But what this new update allowed us to do is actually change the size of these labels. So let's just say for whatever reason, I wanted the implied volatility, this first label right here to be a little bit bigger. What I could do is come over here to my studies icon in the upper right hand corner. And that'll let me see that custom indicator right down here below. And what I want to do in this case is edit that script. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this little script icon here. And now in this list, you can see a very large set of conditions that I'm looking for or how I'm calculating this indicator or this label up here. And the label that I wanted to adjust is actually this one right here. This is the implied volatility label. 
And if what I wanted to do was increase that label from, right now it's at small, let's say I wanted it to go up to medium, what I'm gonna do is just go to the end color here and just to the right of it, we're gonna add one more property. This one is going to be size is equal to font size dot medium in this case. Let's go ahead and hit apply down here and get out of that to see it. And now up here in the upper left, you can see I just increased the size of that label. And I would have just done the exact same thing to these other two if I wanted to increase those ones as well. But that was also a nice little addition in case you guys ever want to increase the size. That's how you can do it. And by the way, the way that you can edit that or if you want instructions to look through that a little bit more closely, if we come up here to education, and in this case go to the release notes, this is the most recent update right here that I'm referring to, February 8th. And if you click on that, gives you a breakdown of all the updates in this most recent update. But then if we wanted to scroll down to the bottom, that was a lot of scrolling. Here are the instructions for editing those labels. So right here is where we can adjust those sizes. So you've got medium, large, larger, very large, extra large. And this just gives you an idea of how to do it later on. But hopefully that helped. Hopefully you guys find those new updates useful. But if you have any other questions or if you want to watch any other videos, go ahead and check out this one below and I think it'll help you as well. Otherwise, have a great week and I'll see you on the next one.